Today, we're gonna to use FG Funnels to create a simple quiz. All right, so now when I first go in on the left-hand side, I'm gonna go over to my uh, my sites on the left hand and inside my life, uh, my sites on the left hand, I'm gonna go over to where it says surveys and I'm gonna to go to builder. Inside this survey, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna delete the one I had here, just not to get super confused. I can create a quick little folder and shove it in there. So I'm gonna do this. This is gonna be my dogs and, well, my dog survey, dog surveys. Because I might have more than one. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly confirm. Click in it, add a survey. Okay, and notice it brings you to this screen. Now, what I wanna do first and foremost than anything is I wanna name the survey because inside of this software, you always wanna make sure you're naming things because it makes it easier to find later on. I'm gonna go into options and I'm gonna name my survey, dog survey. All right, cool. And then once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and start. All right, now, in order to start, I need to add fields. So I'm gonna come into the field areas and these are the standard fields. Now notice it has full name, last name, phone number, email. We don't wanna add those right at first. We wanna make sure we start getting to the questions, right? So we're gonna go over to custom fields and we're gonna search for a question. Now it has, do you like dog or cats? But I wanna be very direct in this particular one. I wanna add a custom field and I wanna go in and I wanna create my own. Now. Notice that I went from standard, which is again, your full name, your last name, your phone and email to custom fields where I'm gonna create my own questions. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a field here. I'm gonna do a radio select because I wanna make it super simple for my customers. And inside the field name, radio select by the way is the little buttons just to be very clear, right? I'm gonna put in, do you like dogs? Right, very simple. Now. The group is where the information is gonna be stored in the contact area. Now, I can tell you, you always wanna store your core information in contact, so don't use contacts for this sort of stuff. You wanna use always additional info. Reason being is, because it's all the way at the bottom uh, and it won't clog up the important information you need, like phone number, email, and name, uh, because that's what you're gonna be mostly working with. If you start stu stuffing a lot of stuff in the wrong places, it's just gonna get very cumbersome for you to find that information you need right away. And usually those are the core information things that you need. So don't put anything in the contact area, only do it for the secondary areas like additional info or general info. But we're gonna do additional info because this is kind of like a fun survey and it would just be something cool for me to know about my customers, right? And again, if you're running any kind of dog training or dog grooming services, this would be more along the lines of something you would wanna do in, and it would be very relevant to your business. So you would probably move it up into general info versus additional info. Now for the first questions is, yes, I love them. All right, and you can even put a little emoji here, a little love sign here, maybe a dog. All right, I'm just having some fun with it. All right, and then come over here. No, I can't stand them. All right, and another little emoji. You know, something like that. And if I wanted to add a picture uh, in here, I could, because all I have to do is choose a file and it would be the actual image icon. Now for this particular example, we're not gonna do it. Just know that you have that available uh, and you're gonna be able to do it here. So, but for instance, we're gonna leave it and we're gonna go ahead and go forward. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. It says that the field's been created. Sometimes it doesn't show right away. And I'm gonna refresh the field because I need to move that question over. Again, it brings me back to this. It didn't name the survey. So let's do that dog survey. I should have saved it. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and save survey. Come over here. Fields. Custom fields. Do you like dogs? See? Perfect. Now, because we're working in a way of quizzes, what we want to do is add different slides. So we're going to ask the second, uh, the second question. Now I want to like have like an open-ended question where I'm going to ask them, well, what kind of dogs do you like? And let them fill it in. Right. And here I'm going to do like a single line. What is your favorite dog breed? Okay. Again, in the group, I want to do additional info and I'm going to go ahead and hit save. I'm gonna save my survey because for some odd reason, it's uh, it's not really tracking right now. Oh, so I'm gonna hit save survey. Notice my question is not there, don't panic. All you have to do is hit the little refresh button. And since I saved the survey, I'll have it already here. Again, come in here, hit the back. Custom fields, what's your favorite dog breed? Boom, right there. Now I got what's your favorite dog breed, right? 
And I'm going to go ahead and ask, and is, you know, something really cool. Um, and I'm going to ask for a file upload. Next. Upload a picture of your favorite dog. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to allow for JPEGs and PNGs and allow for multiple files. And I'm going to put a limit of, let's say, I don't know, we'll do like 10. All right. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, and I got to pick it in a group. Additional info. Because I don't want to clog that up. All right. We're going to give it a second. Save survey. Refresh. Grab my field that I just created. Come back down. Custom fields. Boom. And now I have this. Now you're like, well, well, this doesn't really sound like a quiz. Well, it is. You're gathering information. But what the cool thing about it is the survey function inside of FG is that you can come in here and on the first question, right? Let's go to the first question. I'm going to hit save survey again. I just don't want to lose my progress here. Now, if they love dogs, we're going to say that they are qualified. However, if they can't stand dogs, we're going to disqualify them after submit. Now you can disqualify them immediately after sending because that's going to immediately do something on the back end that's going to allow us to track, right? So I'm going to come over here. And now that this is done, um, I will click on the gray screen like I just did before. And I put disqualify if they can't stand them. I'm going to make this required. Actually, I'm going to go back in and make all my questions required. The reason being like that, people can't skip it. All right. And... I can go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to add a new slide and let's just say we're going to do like a little, well, we'll just do like a, a number, right? Hit next and we'll say on a scale of one to five, how much do you really Love dogs. Okay. And I'm going to show you why this is important because we're going to use this later on in a little bit of logic. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go additional info. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. All right. Same thing. Save survey. Refresh. Come back. Some fields. Awesome. Boom. Right there. All right. Now I've created my survey, right? What I want to do is I want to go in and like I said, we have all these questions. I want to make sure that they're required. So I'm going to click on the question. I'm going to make it required. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to options. Now, here's the cool thing about it. If they disqualify after submit, um, I can send them to a URL. Um, so for instance, if they didn't like, uh, dogs, I can literally come over here and send them to cats.com. <laughs> All right. Uh, forward slash forward slash actually cats.com. If they love dogs, I can come over here. Um, and on the, the message submit, I can open a URL and, or I can just say, uh, thank you so much. We will send you your quiz results soon. Now, because this is not a real true quiz software, it's not going to give you the ability, uh, unless you're doing some really mass um, kind of calculations in the back end, which you can do, and I'm going to show you how to do one or two of them. Uh, but you almost want to get it where they fill out the quiz and then you're going to get back to them with the results because then that's going to create a conversation. This is really good for coaches. This is really good for anybody that's a consultant. Somebody fills out a questionnaire. You don't want to give them immediate information back saying, Hey, um, I don't understand why, um, you know, like, uh, like I, I don't, I want to tell you why this wasn't a fit. Like for instance, I have one on email deliverability. They don't get immediate quiz results. It literally says, great. Thank you for taking the quiz. I'm going to go back and see all your results and I'm going to reach out back to you personally. 
And then it immediately creates a connection. I can get them on the phone and then I can close them into my regular product. And that's kind of the way you got to think about these things. So because it's not really true quiz software, it's not going to calculate things. You can't associate. Uh, but this is kind of the best way to do it. Now, you can do very simple ones like I just did here. Like they immediately like they disqualify. This is where you send them. But if they qualify this, you know, they, they go in the right place and so forth and so on. So that's something that you can do automatically. So for instance, uh, if they disqualified after submit, you can put in, you can send them to a, a thank you page that says, Hey, unfortunately you're not a fit based on one of the questions. See, it has conditional logic, but only for one question, not multiple questions. And that's why like you can have one standard question. Like for instance, a lot of the quizzes that you take online, one of the questions is, are you ready to invest $3,000, $5,000? If the answer is no, it immediately disqualifies them. And it goes to a thank you page and you give them like a free guide or a uh, kind of a parting gift sort of thing. So you want to have a little bit of a text message, or first we're going to put a little field that says, um, to get your quiz results, please um, complete the information below. All right, and notice that it's super big, not centered, so what we're going to do is center it. We're going to make the size a little bit smaller. Beautiful. And guess what we're going to add now? Now that this is done, give me a sec. I don't know why it's giving me a hard time right now. There we go. Um, and I just was looking for that little back arrow. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my standard fields. First name, last name, email, uh, because I'm going to need that in order to get them results. I'm going to make these all required. Because that's how it tracks. That's how the survey tracks the results. Okay, so now that this is all said, I'm going to click on something else for some odd reason. This is giving a really hard time. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Wonderful. Now that this is saved, I'm going to go back into my funnels up top here. I'm going to go back to my, uh, I think we had a lead magnet funnel real quick. There it is, the lead funnel. Perfect. I'm going to click on here. Again, very ugly lead magnet. Yours would be way prettier and nicer. Uh, this is going to come over here. And I'm going to delete this area here. And I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to put my survey in. Now, it's going to give me an option to select my survey. My survey is going to be my dog survey. Awesome. And it saves it right there. Now, what's cool about it is, based on the results that you had, right? Like, if they disqualified... They were going to go to cats.com, but if they qualify, they're going to go to your next page, like a thank you page. The redirect action, when you click on the left-hand side and you go to redirect action right here on the left-hand side, it says use action from the survey builder. Remember how I put when they disqualify to go to cats.com and when they qualify to go to a thank you page, I would go back. All right. So I'm going to hit save this and I'm going to leave this as use the action on the survey builder because what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my thank you page address here. Because when they qualify, I want them to go to the thank you page because I want them to book an appointment with me, right? I'm going to come over here. Um, oop. Let's go to our sites. Let's go to our surveys. Back to our builder. Back to our dog survey. When Remember the options. When they qualify, right? On submit, I want them to go to a URL. They're going to go to the my thank you you are uh, URL that I have here. When they disqualify, I'm going to send them to the URL cats.com. All right. So be funny, but kind of cool, but it would still work. Right. Pretty cool. Now, what we did is we created the, the survey, right? And you can have a lot of fun with this. I mean, remember, the only thing is it's not going to calculate results. You can have one disqualifying question that's going to take them to a different thank you page if they didn't qualify and or if they did qualify, you'll take them to the thank you page, like a calendar page, that it's time for them to take the next step, which is book a call with you. Now, once you have that done, remember, for everything you do inside of FG Funnels, you're going to need an automation. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder, and the folder is going to be, uh, we're going to name it 12, and it's going to be quiz automations. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and hit create. Come over here, hit quiz. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the workflow, start from scratch. Now, we got a couple of cool things going on here, and we're going to do a couple of things that we have going on. So first and foremost, uh, we're going to label this like uh, 01, or you can name it like Q1 for quiz. 
Okay, Oop, let's try that again. Q1. All right, and this is going to be a quiz submission. All right, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go ahead and select my survey because that's what it's called. The quiz is called a survey. And then a survey is dog survey. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and hit save trigger. I'm going to come over here. And then uh, once uh, I come over here, this is going to be the, oh, I'm sorry. So I, I submitted the quiz. It's going to be the dog survey quiz, right? The next thing I'm going to do is contact tag. All right. And it's going to be dog. Okay. Because they love dogs. All right. And what's cool is. I can do an if else and I can do different branches. So for instance, contact details, I go to my questions because remember every field is associated with the contact. Now on a scale, remember we had a scale on a scale of one to five, how much do you really love dogs? If it's greater than four, okay, save action. Oop, let me try that again. I'm going to call this uh, greater then four, I want it to have a certain action. If it's equal to or greater than five, okay, I'm gonna go to contact details right here. I'm gonna go to the question on a scale of one to five. I'm gonna do equals, oop, greater than, oop, I'll say equals to. Actually, no, greater than or equal to, we should be doing that. Because anything greater than or equal to, okay, and this one will be less than four, because you have to do one side and then you have to do the other side, right? Less than four. Um, and you could actually, you know, make it a little bit better. This is less than or equal to four. Oop, three, not four, because we're using four up here, okay? Now I have two different paths that this person can take. I could say, wow, you really like dogs, right? Like, so this email would go, you really like dogs. <laughs> so, you know, like something along that way, say uh, the person's name, custom values. Remember, because it provided you that. Oh my God, you're a dog lover. See, something like that. And then over here, Eh, you really don't like dogs. Are you sure you like dogs? All right, and then come over here, same thing here. Custom values, contact, first name. Are you sure you like dogs? Boom, save action. And I would even consider these, like the people that are greater than four are gonna be like your hot leads. People less than four are, gonna, are less than four are gonna be like, or less than three or equal to three are gonna be that. Actually, let me just go ahead and change that to say less than and equal to four, to three, I'm sorry, I keep saying four, but I meant three. Uh, then they're kind of a medium sized lead. Maybe you're gonna have to do a little bit more like, hey, here's some additional free guides, blah, blah, blah. Here on this email, this is where I would actually sell here is my dog lover product. Just to kind of give you uh, an idea of how that would work. Um, and you would go through there. Same thing here would be like, hey, here's a couple things. You know, here's another quiz you could take to really make sure you love dogs. And then I could even give, give a, like a, a really better a contact because I know that they like dogs, but I can infer, further segregate that that says like super dog lover, you know, like super dog lover. All right. And what, or whatever tag you want, and then I could give an additional tag here. I can send an alert to myself, letting them know that the quiz has been done. But overall, you can really have some fun with this here. So again, just to kind of recap everything. We created the quiz, right? We put it inside a web page, which we recommend you always doing. Uh, you can have one qualifying question that allows you to disqualify or qualify based on one particular question in there. And then if you really want to have some fun with the way people are responding, and if it's multiple choice, uh, you can then use conditional logic here, like if else statements to kind of really subdivide 
where they're going to go, what categories, what emails they're going to get, and so forth and so on. So even if you wanted to send like a quick little quiz to see how people classify as your audience, this is a really good way to segment your audience using the survey slash quiz funnel. So hopefully this helps and we'll see you in the next one.